Well, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the call consecutively for those who were um, here yesterday, and uh, welcome to um, the observers as well. So um, let's start with um, confirming who's here. So I see um, Alan, uh, um, Craig Nunn, um Ernest from Afrinic, uh, John Sweeting. Michael from Aaron, um, Nirani, Paul Randick. So um, these are the members that I am seeing um, on the WebEx. And if there's anybody who's here at the call that I haven't called the name, um, please, oh, I see Nico, uh, Nico's name here as well. I think that's everyone that I'm seeing. So if there's anybody else who's here that I haven't called the name, um, and who's here as a Chris team, um, please um, either express on the chat or um, raise a voice uh, and let us know that you're here. Okay. So um, I'm not um, hearing or seeing any um, chat. So I'll start to do the um, agenda review. So um, we have um, six items. Uh, no. 
Well, except for the agenda review, we have five items to discuss for today's call. So um, check on the action um, to be um, done from the last meeting. And uh, we'd like to go through the final check on the initial draft. Um, the main four focus, of course, is confirmation on suggested revisions, especially the ones that uh, we had quite a bit of discussion uh, yesterday. And um, I would also like to um, confirm what are the things that we actually discussed uh, during the, um, in the mailing list that we wanted to consider, but we didn't have time to reflect for this meeting. And, um, and then I also like to confirm a few administrative things to prepare for the announcement. Um, so I, I'd like to um, confirm if everybody is happy with the draft that I've sent out on the mailing list. Um, and uh, another thing I'd like to discuss is how we're going to um, um, utilize not just the, um, the NRO global mailing list, but the role of the uh, regional uh, mailing list um, run by each of the um, RIR regions. And another form of engagement um, that we can consider to, you know, um, uh, to reach out our messages, um, um, to the draft effectively to other, to each of the RIR regions. And and then if we have, we, if we still have time, it would be nice if we can um, have some idea on how we're going to start working to incorporate the feedback that we're going to get. And lastly, um, talk about the next step. So that's basically what I'd like to talk um, in this call. Um, anybody else has anything else that you'd like to discuss? I'm not hearing from anybody or seeing hands. So uh, let's go into the agenda um, item. So start from action review. So um, I believe both the actions have been done. So one was um, suggested text from Michael um, on the global PDP part. And the second one is um, to have, I'm uh, sorry, I put it Andre, but it's uh, Andres. Uh, and my apologies for um, mixing up the names on the review committee. So we have both of them. So let's go straight into agenda item three and uh, confirm on suggested revisions. So um, with Michael, or oh, no, 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 um, I, I, actually, um, would um, Herman be able to show the text that is suggested by uh, Michael? I, I think if it can show the um, the proposed latest draft, that will be good. But well, I have the Thank whole the, the whole document. Yeah. Um, the perfect. Okay. Yeah, I think this is very helpful. Thank you. So. Um, is section three? Yes, it's section three. Yeah, I think it's around this. Yeah. Michael, what page have I need to move? Do you remember? I believe it's section eight. I or page eight, I believe. Yes, that's it. Okay. So it's the um So I think it's the paragraph that starts with the processes for um, developing, agreeing, and implementing. Um, is that the right paragraph, Michael? Yes, it is. Um, the first two sentences, or the first sentence. Okay, and so I have some kind of many. problem with the display of the documents. It's, uh, bear with me, please. Yeah. Um. Thank you. I. Well, I'm actually okay. I think I'm able to see the document um, here on the screen. And I think if every if people have issues uh, seeing the screen, maybe uh, you can access the um, Chris web page. And um, if there's a link to the um, the proposed document, uh, it might be easier for some people to see directly from there. 
So the paragraph that, um, uh, I'm sorry, Michael, that you were looking at is the sentence that starts with um, with the processes for developing, agreeing, and implementing policy related to management of the global internet number resource pool. Is that the right one? That's correct. I actually moved the um, the paragraph. It initially was a paragraph below that, but because mm -hmm. of the feedback um, I was putting in, it actually made sense to incorporate it into this paragraph. I see. Okay, understood. And um, if you can briefly explain which uh, particular part that um, you um, updated uh, and what are the kind of things that you actually uh, make, sh make sure to take care of, I think that would be um, helpful for people to pay attention. Absolutely. Um, so what happened was I, we had had initial proposed uh, text, and then there was some uh, feedback. I know that um, Bill and Alain were able to uh, give a little bit of feedback on this. So I wanted to reflect that feedback in this language. And I had taken out the, um, the parts of commitment, you know, where we had discussed in the call yesterday. All that language came out. And I included um, the language with regard to, you'll see it starts with, however, to resolve the inherent conflict. And um, that was to reflect the, the conflict that we had identified yesterday between ICANN as the IANA functions operator serving in both the role as a provider, but also being in the role as a uh, ratifying body for global policy. So uh, my understanding was that we wanted to be very clear that one, in this proposal, we were suggesting that an amendment to the ASO MOU uh, be made that would remove ICANN from that ratifying role, but in all other um, in all other respects, the goal of PDP would remain the same. Uh, one thing I did add, because in reviewing the ASO MOU, is that it wouldn't necessarily become global policy upon uh, each of the RIRs ratifying the proposed common text, but that the ASO um, AC would still have to just review the process by which we did so. And then at that point, the proposed policy text would become global policy. So that's what I tried to capture in this. And um, if anybody has any questions, or I look forward to the comments. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, and incorporating the comments that's um, being expressed by um, Alan and uh, Bill. Um, and I, I think um, Andre has um, made some um, comments. But I'm not sure on which part. Um, I think Andre's comment was with regard to the original okay. text that we had that I had proposed. Mm -hmm. But I think some of what we had um, proposed in this text may address his concerns. Although um, we can also consider his comments as well. Yes, I think just to be safe, let's um, confirm whether this has been his concern has been addressed in this text, and then if it's Clear, then I, I think we're good. So, um, the first point. So, he, I think he doesn't agree that um, NTIA actually um, takes the um, offer on the stewardship role, the oversight oversight role for the IANA registry system. It's just a contract that imposes obligations for the IANA operator to comply with. So, um, he doesn't think that the NTIA has role in the PDP, and he wants to make that clear. I think it's quite an important point. And um, let's see if there's any part that gives hints that NTIA has this role. Is this part being revised? I think he was um, commenting on what the last language. It, there was used to be a sentence that referred to the existing mm -hmm. uh, NTIA contract for the IANA mm -hmm. services, mm -hmm. and that's since been removed. Um, mm -hmm. Unless anybody else has some thoughts on that, I thought that was what he was commenting mm -hmm. on, but that's not in this draft anymore. Understood, and I also didn't find um, that part he was uh, closing. So uh, it looks like. Um, your observation is correct, unless anybody else um, observes otherwise. And I think uh, the second point was, I think, 
he wants to express that the ICANN has dual role today on both um, as the, um, the approval, making the approval on the global PDP and also as an IANA operator. So there's a conflict. And I think this is the comment that's been expressed by Alan and Bill as well, which um, Alan has expressed that his, um, this is um, being reflected and addressed um, in the text. So um, and I'm seeing several like um, people agreeing, and I have uh, Nurani. Um, thank you, Suni. And oh, I'm not going to try to speak uh, on behalf of, of Andre, but but um, the way I read, and certainly his second point is, is one that I I agree with. So I the fact that the ICANN has this dual role is not something it's not something new that we have just discovered. We're very well aware of this. Uh, I think the concern race is, indeed, because I can have this dual role, we do not want to mix policy issues with the IANA function. By doing that, we're actually um, you we're know, we, we, we're adding insult to injury, so to speak. I think because of that, it's very important to keep those things separate. Um, the the other thing I I'm a little bit concerned, or actually very concerned with, is that are we saying that the CRISP group is proposing an amendment to the ASO MOU? And if so, I'm thinking I'm actually asking if that is within our mandate. Uh, and I don't think that follows due process. And I'm a little bit afraid that not only I have two concerns. One is that we're mixing policy into this. Uh, which is exactly, I think, which is what we don't want to do. My second point is that I'm a little bit afraid that we are undermining the existing bottom-up uh, processes within the RIR structures by tasking the, or by adding to the CRIS mandate that we are proposing a, a, mandate, a, a change to the ASOMU. I don't think that is within the scope of this group. I don't think it's within the scope of this document. Um, and I actually think that by doing that, we are uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. It doesn't mean that I don't uh, think that the, the motivation behind putting this text is correct. I think the concerns that motivate uh, inserting this text, I totally agree with those concerns, but I do not think that uh, this is the vehicle for that. Thank you. I hope that was clear. Thank you. Very clear to me, Nirani. Thank you. And thank you for raising two important points. I, I really um, see both the points and concerns that you have raised, that we shouldn't mix policies with operations, and we, we shouldn't give the message that actually the NTIA has any kind of involvement or authority over the global PDP. This is very, very important. And the second is that, um, um, yes, are we in the position as a Christine to just suddenly say that we're going to change the global policy. And um, I don't think we are. So we have to be very careful in um, wording this and um, how we phrase it to make sure it doesn't sound as though we're just like, you know, the Chris team suddenly comes up and uh, change, trying to propose a change in the global policies without the usual process that, that you said go through and I see Alan um um yeah so um please um. uh yes yeah, so I think that the Chris team's mandate is to propose changes to the the way the RIRs interact with um the IANA operator and also possibly with ICANN and uh so I think suggesting changes to existing documents is within the scope of what the CRISP team can do. Um, however, if we're suggesting changes, we need to be careful that uh, the changes have consensus from our communities. So we can't bypass the bottom-up <laughs> process, but I think we can suggest changes in, in almost anything. Thank you, Alan, for that clarification. So. Um, I think, um, does it um, address your concern on your second point, Nirani, if we say that we, we do actually 
um, mentioned about the, post, the amendment of the ASO um, MOU, but it does on but give the condition that given that this uh, goes through the um, usual agreed um, existing process on um, revising the, um, the the MOU, would that make sense to you, Nirani? Um, I'm, I'm afraid that I I disagree. Not not um, simply because well, two things. Uh, I don't actually think it is our mandate to propose changes. Uh, to the IAN operator and ICANN. I think we are supposed to define the relationship with the IAN operator. And I think maybe maybe we need to have a, a, a discussion on, on on those things first, first because they're, they're, they're principal to uh, what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, my second point is I really do not think that the CRISP group is the correct body or the correct channel for changes to the ASO MOU. And I'm not saying that only because um, I want to be bureaucratic about things, but because I think that we need to, the reason we follow due process and we follow the correct channels that we've set up is because we are a bottom-up, transparent and inclusive um, community. We need to show that in all the ways we, we uh, we interact with, with various bodies. If we start, I, I think that we, we um, not only is the Chris Group the wrong uh, avenue to do this, uh, we have all, all sorts of, of uh, wisdom in this group. We have experience, we have knowledge, and we have concerns. But if we're putting our Chris hat on, I don't think this is where we address those concerns. Um, we can certainly find other ways of doing that within our communities, uh, but but I think we um, I think we are undermining these exact bottom up processes and structures that we are trying to uh, strengthen through this process. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nirani. And um, so, firstly, I think your question was that. I mean, do we really need to cover these um, global um, uh, global PDP uh, as a part of this uh, Chris team's proposal, um, considering that the, the part that we have to uh, focus is um, on something that's related to the IANA function? That, that's, that was the first point that I understood that you, you wanted to um, put across. And the second point is that, um, if I understood it correctly, by putting this um, uh, mentioning about the ASO MOU in this document, it would seem to um, imply that the CRISP team is um, coming up with the changes that it actually, in fact, this is something that we have to change through the usual bottom-up process and not for the CRISP team to uh, make decisions over this. And it would seem as though we're not actually respecting the process or the bottom-up process that should be developed from the community. Is that a fair um, understanding of your point, Nirani? Yes, thank you, Zuman. And just, uh, I will be quiet and let others speak, but just a, a point of clarification. I'm not asking should the global, the global PDP be discussed here. I'm trying to actually make the point that if our concern is, and I think it is, the dual role of, of ICANN, as in the in the global PDP and IAN operator, then it is even more important that we separate those things. That is the point I'm trying to 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 um, um, to make here. Thank you. Otherwise, I think you stated much more eloquently what I was trying to say. So thank you. Thank you, Nurani. So. Um so we, we want to separate these roles, but then we, uh, although we're saying that they should be separate, it would actually seem as though we're mixing up the two roles by bind, um, binding it as a related uh, thing. So thank you for that clarification, on Nirani. And um, I can see that point. And um, hmm. so... Um, 
And okay, so um, I, I I can't really think of immediately a, a solution to address um this point, but and I also have an observation I would like to make about the point of um that's being made about um I can having dual role both as the approval of um global policy development process and as an IANA operator. But I I'm, I'm not sure if this would actually be um considered as the uh, controversial or conflicting role because if you actually you know put uh, consider this in terms of the RIR, RIRs is actually the same, at least in, in terms of um APINC case. Um because um, the, the policy itself is actually being developed by the community, but um, APNIC is the one that um, that actually uh, APEC is the one that actually um, um, approves the final um, policy. Uh, it may be different in other regions, but that's the case for APNIC. And then, yet APNIC actually is the organization that provides the uh, the number of resource services. So APNIC actually uh, exchanges contracts with uh, its members. So that would also be saying that APNIC took a dual role. And I, I'm not sure if that would be considered as a, a, as a convincing or challenging point about um, the, con as a concern that we're raising. OK, thank you, Paul, um, for clarifying. This is not across the RIR, so it might be different uh, depending on the RIR. Thank you for that clarification. Um, okay, but um, I suppose the point was that some RIs actually do this. So um, if we actually say that this is like a controversial role, it might actually challenge the case of some of the existing RIRs, although this is not the case for all the RIRs. So that would be something that we want to note about um, for putting this sentence. And um, does anybody have any comments about what's being um, discussed, or does anybody have any suggestions about um, uh, addressing this point um, before I, I try to go into a further step? Um, exactly. Thank you, Michael. Michael. Perhaps can I just ask a question and also offer a possible solution? Um, a question for Nurani. Um, so. Where do you see that forum for that discussion would take place? So that's the question. Um, the potential solution that I'm thinking about is that perhaps we can delete the reference to this from this document and and address it this way. I mean, one, this this submission is really intended to be a very high level description of the SLA, and I think we are all agreed on that. And I think we've been focused on maybe some of the very minutia detail issues um, that doesn't necessarily have to come up now in this document. Um, one of the potential solutions could be that there's a termination clause in the SLA that says that, for example, if the ICANN board make decision relating to G the global PDP, um, in a way that's inconsistent with open, transparent, accountable way, for example, then that gives rise to a right to terminate the contract. Um, you know, that, that is a potential solution, a way out for us. Um, and that doesn't need to be said in this document. That can just come up when we negotiate the contract. Thank you. Thank you very much, Craig. That sounds like a reasonable approach to me. But um, um, I have um, uh, John on the queue. And um, yeah, so I'll first I'll have John to speak and then have Nurani afterwards and Alan. Yeah, so I was just thinking maybe uh, perhaps we just um, <clears throat> identify that as a um, possible issue and that um, you know, it would be looked at to be resolved through the proper channels. I think not identify, if we, if we see something we feel is a conflict and don't identify it, I think that may be, you know, that might not be the best way to go. But identifying it, just that stating that we recognize that there may be a potential issue with that and that we recommend that it be reviewed and possibly fixed through the correct process. Thank you very much, John. That's um, that's 
certainly uh, sounds like a, a, a reasonable possibility. And um, now next, um, I have Ronnie. Uh, I will let others uh, speak first, and then if there's a need to, to respond to Craig, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'll go to Alan. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to correct something I said earlier, um, or change my mind. Um, I said I thought that we could change almost anything, but I've reread the RFP, and I noticed that in Section 2, um, it asks about the existing or pre-transition uh, sources of policy, and uh, that would include the ICANN board. Um, but in Section 3, where it asks about uh, proposed changes, um, it's asking about proposed changes only to the oversight mechanism, not to the sources of policy. So what I said earlier, I think, was wrong. Um, we should not be changing this, the way policy is made. So perhaps it can be done somewhere else, but I've changed my mind about whether or not we can do it here. Thank you very much for that uh, clarification. It's very useful. So, um, Paul? Yes, thank you very much, Azumi. Um, yes, just in light of what Narani has mentioned and what Alan has just proposed forward, I, I, I have to say this is out of the scope of this group. And if you feel that there's something that you want to identify from this process, I think it's smart that you go back to your communities and you identify it there. Because I can tell you if any one of us from the ripe crisp team took something like this on, I'm not quite sure if we would be taken very well when we got back to our communities. I think this is something that we need to bring through the community processes. There are well-established channels that are there for this very thing. We are not looking at the global policy development process. I'm, I'm very happy that Alan has found that, that reference there. I think we are looking at the oversight contract. We must remain focused on what our task is. And I think this is mission, mission creep and out of the scope of this context. Thank you. Thank you very much. I totally agree with this observation and a comment made by our poll, and that matches with the Alan's observation as well. And so regarding to the point that uh, John has raised, um, I, I wonder how others feel about it. So uh, maybe we can, um, do, does anybody feel that it's better to actually, um, it's not in, inside this document, but when we send message to our community, mention that the Chris team actually um, considered about the possibility, but uh, we felt that this was, um, it was not appropriate to be um, addressed uh, in, in this, um, um, this draft proposal. Is, do you think it's uh, worth mentioning it, or um, we shouldn't mention it? So um, I have um, Alan, Paul, or is that an old hand? Do, we, do I have anybody on the queue? Um, do I have Paul? Yes, I, I, I'm in the queue, is it? So um, I'm, I've got a little bit. So I think uh, we already had you, Alan, right? Or are you waiting? Well, I think we had Alan in. So so um so I think next uh, is you, Paul. Oh, thank you. Um, very very smart, Izumi. I actually though I'm not really even quite sure if I'm comfortable with the Chris team making reference to this. I think that that you know, there are enough of us, there are 10 people from the community on this call. And if any one of those thinks that this is something that needs to be championed, I would encourage that individual to actually bring this forward into their community and it will resonate through. And they can bring that up and saying, I saw this in the Chris team. I'm a Chris team member. I saw this, I'm bringing this to the community. This was a concern. I think this is a much better avenue to place this in and let our community take these concerns up and, and not seeing it as some kind of collective recommendation from uh, something like a CRISP team. I think it, it's better to go through the existing processes that we have for this kind of discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I think that rationale does make sense. And I see John's comments outside the document works as well and each of us the taking it back to our communities one way as well. So maybe um, the way is we, we don't mention anything about this um, in the document nor our announcement. And then if um, 
if each of the um, curse team members individually feel that this is something that we have to you have to explain to the community, then I think you, you can do this. But there's no need to put it as like as an official message as curse team. And if you get asked about this, certainly you can explain it. Curse team actually discuss this. But um, it's not a message that we, we want to just um, proactively um, share. Um, so does that make sense to everybody, um, including John? Makes sense to me. Great, thank you. Great. Okay. So I think um, so. The idea is we just uh, remove the whole paragraph from. Um, yeah, thank you, Michael. So let's take out this whole paragraph and just focus. Well, our, our, our proposal was just focus on um, what's affected by the um, the um, IANA, what's related to the IANA function. So I think we're done with this part. And then, um, so let's move to the second uh, revision, um, which is, um, I think, um, the text has been um, proposed by Andres. So, um, Andres, would you let um, Amen know which uh, paragraph that um, is reflected, which which page first? Um, would you let us know which page that, so that um, Amen can show on the screen? Or, oh, do we have Andres in the call, actually? Or maybe yes. Michael? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm <laughs> sorry, yeah. But the, the issue is that uh, I am quite confused about how is the next step. Um, what I, what, the only thing we did is just editing a text and commenting on the list. I cannot see this in the proposal yet, unless I am not looking well. Um, what, what do you uh, mean? Excuse me, it's actually on, on the same page uh, that we were just looking at. It's that paragraph that begins to ensure the service level defined mm -hmm. in the proposed contract. I believe okay. that's the... Okay, a little, a little uh, yeah, a little up. Well, that, that same paragraph gets, because your original edition, uh, Isumi, was... Uh, re-edited by, by, uh, by Michael with my help, and I believe uh, the current version is just this paragraph that uh, now is, uh, uh, th there is a highlight in, in yellow color uh, next to the paragraph, so you can see that. And I believe this uh, collects in a decent way uh, the proposal, and um, it, it was very hard for us to summarize that, and, uh, especially with uh, little time, but I believe this uh, is okay. But also see, I have seen on the list that Andre uh, said that uh, there were some of the, his concerns that weren't uh, collected here. So what I did is uh, proposing Andre to, um, if he if he's able to do that, to provide a a third version, because you, let's say that your version run is the, the first, and this uh, could be the second, but uh, maybe Andre needs to provide some more input if he believes his concerns were not addressed here. And at the moment, I believe that we are okay with this current uh, paragraph that we have here. So I don't know if there is something else to say. To say. Thank you very much, um, Andres. So I, I think, um, yeah, I'm very happy that um, you and uh, Michael has actually work, have been working on this draft. It's really helpful. So, um, sorry, could, can I just jump in? I'm, I'm, I think I might be able to clarify. Um, Andre's uh, mail that came in uh, just at two o'clock is not about this par paragraph. It's about other texts that have has been discussed on the list. So maybe could I propose that we, if we, we leave this and move on to the other parts of of the text. Andre's uh, uh, mail about the overlaps. Uh, uh, his proposal about overlaps not included. 
That's a completely separate issue. Okay, okay. Nurani, uh, Andres, uh, thanks, thanks for the clarification. I hope uh, now this. Uh, I am less confused after you explained that this is a separate uh, issue. I believe it, it is also. But when we spoke with Michael, we were confused about what uh, was Andre referring to. So, um, if you if you are suggesting to move on, is that you are okay with the paragraph, right? Are you okay with it? Uh, sorry, can, can, can you uh, repeat your comment again, Andres? Uh, are we okay with the... Uh, so you want us to confirm if, if we're happy with this suggested text, right? Yeah, and, and if we move on, and this text will be... We'll believe that like, it, like it is now in the current version, or how we will proceed? Yes, yes, exactly. I think um, that's what I wanted to um, uh, discuss here. Uh, whether we're happy with this um, with this um, text um, in this paragraph, and I, I think it's a little, I think um, I believe not everybody has time to um, take a look at this in detail. So, is there anything that um, maybe um, in addition to Andrea's uh, explanation, uh, Michael, is there anything that you would like to? Um, like for sure, in addition, as uh, capturing what what the essence of this um, paragraph is. Um, so, okay. So, which part of the text are we talking about? The part of the text we're talking about is on page eight, and um, so it's the one that's uh, been pointed by um, Herman, which says uh, to ensure the service level defined in the proposed contract is maintained and provided by the IANA functions operator. The NRO and C will uh, conduct periodic review of the service level of this. So that's the paragraph. So it's this, it looks like this, it's the second uh, paragraph on the page that's being displayed. Are we um, all on the same, um, looking at the same sentence? Have we have you all found which sentence we're talking about? We want to we want to talk about this paragraph, which talks about the review committee, an idea that's being uh, shared by the LACNIC region. Uh, it's, no, it's not a new topic. It's a um, review committee topic. That's right. Um, that's a topic that um, so we, we actually discussed this at the last um, call and um, to consider whether to or uh, how we, we, we would uh, reflect this. Um, so that's why it's here and this is the suggested text. So, um, on Nurani, so, um, Let's have Apologies for taking the, the the microphone again. I'm clear now. With uh, I I thought that we might be going back to the text that we were just discussing, and I think what Paul meant with new topic meant that we're talking about a different part of of uh, uh, of the text, basically the one that talks about this re the review committee. Uh, and I, as I said on the mailing list. Uh, I think that you managed to capture the discussion really well. I think we are comfortable with that. Uh, and if, if uh, LACNIC feels that this reflects, uh, addresses their concerns, then we are very happy to, to accept that. Thank you. Thank you very much for that clarification and, um, and support for this uh, suggested text. So, um, does anybody have any comments about this uh, paragraph? Okay, I'm not um, hearing any, any from anybody. So, let's uh, let's reflect this uh, suggested. Uh, happy with it. Thank you, uh, Craig, for expressing that. So, let's uh, reflect this as a part of our proposal. So this will be reflected, and uh, so this, that this is it. Um, so I think we're pretty much uh, done with the the two major parts of the proposal, which had which we had discussions yesterday, and then <laughs> so let's uh, move to another um, agenda. Um, and I think I, I did actually oh. So let's uh, confirm, uh, let's go back to another topic, which was actually um, the one that Andreas has, has helped um, 
phrase that Andre feels that um, his, um, his uh, suggested text uh, is not reflected in this version, which actually talks about the overlap, or the, the part that overlaps with other communities. I think that's the uh, inception one of the document. Um, if this is just uh, simply a matter of, you know, uh, it just happened to be overlooked and not reflected, I, I think there was um, I, I did actually see a couple of people supporting um, Andre's uh, suggested text, and I don't think this is a very controversial issue because it's just simply explaining our relationship with the IETF. So um, I think uh, we can actually uh, request to Michael to reflect this, and we can move on with this. Yeah, absolutely, Izumi. If if that was just something that I uh, it was more probably of an oversight than anything else, and unless there's anybody that has an objection to it, then I can make sure that that uh, the revisions get in, in, uh, included in the updated draft, especially the one that I'm preparing now, and then I can mm -hmm. circulate that around. Great, thank you, Michael. And then um, hand up for phone call. Yeah, Izumi, I just wanted to, to, to second that. It would be great to have that, that text included in there. And I think it's very important for us to make any references we need to to our relationship with IETF. I think it's something that will help us, um, I think, when we're going forward in this process. I think that uh, I would like to see the commonalities as much as we can, uh, as much as is realistic, um, between the RIR community and the IETF. So I believe that this, this, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, it was just, we just forgot to put it in there, that's fine. But uh, I do support that text and I hope that it goes in the next iteration. Thank you, totally agree with you, Paul and uh, Alan. Uh, Paul's already said what I was uh, wanting to say, thank you. Thank you, Alan. So I think we're uh, seeing support from several uh, members of Chris team. Uh, everybody is positively supporting it. So, and then Michael has actually agreed to reflect this. So I think we're done with this uh, this part, and uh, we actually have 15 minutes left. So um, I'd, I'd like to first uh, talk about uh, agenda item four and the next steps and all these administrative um, things. And then, if we um, and then afterwards, I'd like to ask everybody who's at the call if we, if you feel we still want to discuss about the final check on the initial draft, which is more of, it's similar to this uh, this um, uh, this type of uh, point that Andre has raised, uh, like um, something that we agree but just that doesn't get uh, reflected. So, um, so I, I will make sure if everybody wants to. Um, discuss this or think it's okay. So um, I'll skip three for now, but I'll come back to this later. So I'll move to agenda item four, preparation for the announcement. And I actually sent out a draft announcement um, uh, to the mailing list. And um, does anybody have any comments about this draft? Are we happy with this, uh, um, this announcement sentence? Uh, I'm not hearing um, um, any from um, any uh, concerns or uh, comments from anybody. It seems so. Let's uh, use this text to make the announcement, and then I'd like to. Um, uh, so we'll, this will of course be shared uh, to the global mailing list, and I believe a man who will help us uh, also post this on the NRO website. And another. Thing I would like to discuss this agenda uh, 4B is communication with respective other uh, RIR regions. So I really uh, would like to ask um, everybody here, each um, from each of the RIR communities, to uh, forward this to your regional list um, that we have actually um, um, uh, asking um, for comments for our first draft of the proposal and um, also like to clarify about the role of the RIR mailing list in terms of um, incorporating um, comments uh, for, the, uh, for this draft proposal. 
So of course, uh, we will definitely use this uh, on the, the global um, mailing list provided by NRO uh, to to uh, to see the feedback from our community. So any comments that's being expressed on the global um, IANA uh, list, uh, which is run by NRO, then we will we as a press team will certainly uh, incorporate that. Um, so what do we do with the case on uh, the comments that's being expressed on the regional others? Uh, I expect you know you will each have very active discussions uh, within your communities. So how do we incorporate that? And I think there are two possible approaches. Um, one approach is that uh, as the Chris team, uh, we we basically uh, look at the comments received on the global list only, run by NRO. So we just look at one single list. But uh, make sure that um, Chris team members from each of the re uh, regions will share the general discussions and some things to note um, to the global list, the global mailing list, as well as encourage people in your regional list who are making good, important points to uh, put, uh, make their comments directly to the global list in addition to any contributions that's making to the regional list. So it's more like um, the regional list is more like an additional um, outreach and discussion place, but um, make sure we collaborate and uh, we, we get feedback on the global list. So that's one approach. And the other approach is that so we consider all the uh, mailing lists, all the RIR mailing lists and the, um, the NL mailing lists as a source of receiving input. Um, so do people have any uh, comments about uh, which, uh, which approach? My personal preference is the first. So uh, to have a single point to, of receiving comments, and I think it's a little bit too much to ask for all Chris members to follow all RIR discussions. So that's how I feel, and I'd like to hear comments from others. So I'm actually seeing a hand up from, from uh, I, I keep on getting confused, oh, from, so Nurani on 4B. I don't, I don't believe I have anybody else on the queue, so Nurani. Thank you, Jamie. Um, two, I actually think, um, I don't think all Chris members need to follow all this. That's, that doesn't scale and it's not uh, appropriate. I do think we need to encourage those interested in, in joining the global mailing list. But we all have different regions with different, as we've seen in the discussion so far, they, we have slightly different uh, perspectives and, and views on things. Uh, I think it's really important that this is bottom up and that uh, each region also need, gets the, the opportunity to discuss within its community um, and then to channel that. We, I, I've always interpreted the role of the CRIS members to actually represent their communities. That's why we agreed to take on the task and, and that's also why we were selected. Um, so I think it is, is, it is perfectly natural for us to have those discussions in our region uh, and then for us to channel that to this group. Uh, in addition to encouraging our regional uh, communities to participate on the global mailing list, but I don't think it has to be an, an either or. Uh, I, I think it is very hard to have um, um, have good, rich discussion if it all happens on one global mailing list. Uh, and the risk for of rat holding and derailing uh, is, is too high in, in, in my view. So to summarize, I suggest uh, we let each region discuss on their mailing list. Uh, and to to uh, come up with uh, suggestions, proposals, views. They channel that through the CRISP members that, who bring this to this group. Uh, and then it is, of course, all our responsibility to is also consult with the community on the global uh, list. I understand that it, it would be procedurally, it would be easier to just use the global list, but, but I don't think it scales, simply. Thank you. Thank you, Nirani. Um, yes, I agree with this, and it's 
So、um, I think that sounds、uh, very similar to、um, the approach I suggested, but maybe、uh, you may be、uh, emphasizing the importance of the discussions in the in the re- regional、uh, meetings, and also make sure the Chris team,、um, team members uh, will uh, act as a liaison of from their region. So thank you for、um, making sure that this uh, point, uh, this this role、uh, is、uh, covered, and.、Um, Yes, I, I I totally agree with、uh, Alan's point、um, on letting each region discuss on their own list if they choose.、Um, yes,、um, so I, I I agree with this, and I think that's that's exactly what I was、um, I wanted to happen in proposing. So I see、um, John and yeah, John. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that too. I, I just think we we need to really highly encourage people to to use the official、um, NRO list for discussion. And if there's people that don't want to get on that from the community, which you know we're all monitoring and discussing on our community list, that 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 feedback should be we should take it.、Uh, we should make sure that that gets posted to the NRO list as well, so everybody. At least sees the opinions coming in, and we're not just discussing it just amongst ourselves on our list or on our call. That's all. Thank you, John. Yes. So I think, yeah, thank you. I agree with your point. So I think that's a, a clarifying thing. So、uh, let me、um, try to capture what I heard from Nurani and from John as well. So I think.、Um, Not everybody feels comfortable to directly join the global discussion, and、um, as、um, Nirani has mentioned, I think there are some like regional differences, and some people think, okay, I want to first、uh, join and participate in the regional list, and then maybe some build some opinions and get a feeling, and then I'm ready to、um, participate in the global list. Or maybe some people think I just want to join the regional list,、um, and then、um, trust that the CRISP members will will channel the、um, channel my、uh, opinion. That's completely、uh, you know、uh, left up. It is a choice of individual、um, community member, which、uh, mainly they want to participate. But I think the important part um, to um, address John's point is this CRISP member. We'll make sure that、um, the, main, the key point of the discussion in the region will actually be、um, we will be shared on the global list, so that we are not missing any point that、um, the important point that's being、um, discussed on the regional list on the on the global list. And I yeah, so I think that is that a fair observation. Anybody have any、um, further comments? No. Okay. So、um, we can move to.、Um, so how do people feel? We have five minutes left. So、um, do we want to go back to、um, agenda number three? Final check on the initial draft、uh, to make sure whether all the points have been covered.、Um, not to go through the details of the sentence, but just checking. Okay, what are the topics that's being raised, and are, are they all covered on the? On the on the draft, or do you think that、uh, we're we're quite comfortable with、um, trusting um, um, Michael as well as、um, you know each of the individual、uh, Chris team members who raised the who suggested the revision will、uh, proactively also do the checking. So Alan, we sent a small suggestion to the mailing list a few minutes ago. So let's see. Oh, so. Suggested text. Oh, or about review committee. Okay.、Uh, no, that was about the、uh, relationship with the IETF.、Um, oh. Essentially, oh,、okay. yeah. where we talk about special values in the registries,、um, I think we need to say reserved or special values because th- there are some things which are reserved but are not for special use. For example. Seven eighths of the IPv6 space is reserved for possible future use. Now, I don't think it's fair to call that a, a special purpose. So understood, and I think from the I, yeah, I think that's a reasonable suggestion.、Um, so unless anybody feels differently and strongly、um, 
you know, have an opinion about this. I think we can reflect your uh, suggestion, uh, Alan. Uh, does anybody want to comment about this, or are we happy with this talk? If so, um, I think um, we can leave um, item number five to our next call to discuss at the next call on how we in how we work to incorporate feedback. Uh, I actually wanted to what I wanted to discuss was I think we're going to be start receiving many feedback with uh, many different topics. So we have to manage uh, which feedback is being being made. Maybe helpful to sort out by um, by topic, and maybe somebody can keep track of um, major key issues that need to be discussed. That might be something helpful. But I think we can leave that to uh, discuss on Monday. So um, does anybody feel that we want to discuss uh, agenda number five for uh, today? And thank you also, Michael, for um, offering to make that change um, suggested by Alan. And I'm not seeing any objection on on the um, on this call. So um, let's once we're done with this uh, call, um, my, Michael, it would be helpful if you could circulate this um, updated draft to the mailing list and do the um, you know maybe. Um, Confirm for like the final um, check from the Chris members uh, who are who are not at the call today. Let's wait um, until the day uh, a few hours, and then um, until we we make the announcement. Oh, thank you very much, Michael. And uh, regarding um, the agenda item number three, I do actually it might be worth um, doing a very very quick. Check uh, just to um, just to see if we covered everything. But um, I think it was on the last um, material that I shared with the question, not for this meeting. So uh, let's see if I can find it quickly. Um, so if uh, if people are able to access to um, this team website. And then, um, are we all able to find the um, meeting material for the meeting yesterday, for the third meeting on Wednesday um, um, 17th? There's a link which says um, reference for agenda items, which is uh, on the second uh, link from um, second link from the top after Chris Ayana proposal. If you click there, I think it has all the materials that are actually be send it to you as a reference um, for yesterday's call. And um, if you go to page um, page four, are we all following? Are you all following me? Anybody lost? Okay, good. So um, let's go to page. Please open page four, which says final check on the initial draft, and it lists all the topics that's been raised. Um, and um, on the mailing list, um, so we can check. So first point is overlap, and I think uh, Andre has uh, raised uh, that uh, his comment was not reflected. And then we also have uh, three additional. Um, one is related to um, describing our uh, reverse DNS. Um, I think this is the part that um, Alan has, uh, has mentioned um, that we have to make sure that um, and to clarify our role related to the ITF. That might be actually the address as part of um, uh, the overlap part. But would, would uh, Michael be able to help us clarify? Oh, thank you, uh, Hamad, for uh, sharing. Um, so, Michael, would you be able to <coughs> clarify whether you reflected this part uh, related to uh, reverse DNS? Um, I'll have to look and see. I thought I had, but I will um, 
I will double check on that to see if it did or not. Um, I thought I'd incorporated language that had been discussed on the mailing list, but um, to the extent that there is, I'll go through all the uh, lists again, the list entries, and make sure that that's put in. Unless there's something that Thank you very somebody much. else thinks that if there may be something additional that needs to go in there. Thank you very much. And I think Alan has commented um, he, he thinks it's there already, so I think that will be it. Okay, I'll also check as well. And I go on IP music so I think that's um, that was raised by Ernest. And so let's double check, but um, but that's like a not a major point, but we, we have we have to check before we um, um, share this on the And um, as description of RIR services and global policies in our section two, I actually feel this are updated. And uh, I think um, Alan has made additional um, comments related to this, and this is also reflected as well. So I think uh, we're good with this. And um, consideration for future draft, um, let's just uh, quickly go through, but we're not going to discuss the details up here. So um, section B, uh, description of communities use of the IANA. The scope of the IETF and number of resources. This is, I think, we haven't had maybe full time to describe it properly. So, if we think there's additional something additional that we have to describe properly, then maybe we can uh, incorporate this in this uh, second version. Um, and um, this, the one more point is thought description, a court description of each of the of our answers according to order of questions that's been put on the RFP. I feel this is quite very important to make it clear to uh, NTIA and anybody reading this uh, draft document that we're actually answering all the questions. And so I do actually would like to have somebody volunteering to uh, to do this, but um, I don't know um, if this is a little bit too much for Michael to do this because it, it, it does involve a lot of work. So, um, if hand up, Alan. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I thought we had agreed to uh, leave this until the second draft. So, the draft that we're planning to publish tomorrow will not have have that sorting. Um, so I think the only thing we still need exactly. to do is uh, possibly edit the public announcement or call for comments to to clarify that there will be future changes to sort the response. Yes, thank you for that uh, clarification. I, I totally agree with this. And um, so I'm not suggesting that we, we do this uh, for this uh, a, a draft and I'm um, I, I just uh, wanted to flag and uh, explain so that um, we we can start thinking and uh, prepare for uh, incorporating in the second draft. Um, so that, that was the reason for um, explanation. And maybe I think there may be others who are confused. So thank you very much, Alan, for clear, um, uh, making this um, point and uh, clarifying. So um, so you're, you're right. This is not intended for this uh, version of the draft. And so, um, just just to go through which are other issues that we we have to and we want to consider is SLA between IETF and the R RIRs. I'm not sure if this is something that uh, we want to um, include inside this uh, draft, or just something separately that we want to consider as um, as a community. And the same for MOU with the IETF on IP registry and reverse DNS. So uh, I want to keep these uh, topics as something that we, we won't forget um, uh, in incorporating to the, um, the second draft. And uh, going back to this uh, point about description according to order of questions, it does involve a lot of work and we might have to start working early to um, if we want to do this. So I want to see if there's any volunteer who's willing to work on this. Um, on this. Uh, Alan Barrett, I can assist with that. 
Thank you very much. So um, Michael has offered to volunteer and Alan has um, volunteered to assist as well. It is a lot of work and I'm, I'm certainly happy to work with you as well, Michael. I agree, it, it is quite a bit of work. So, so let's all work together. Uh, so uh, you, Michael, and Alan, and uh, myself are uh, working this. So thank you very much for volunteering again, Michael. I appreciate it. And uh, we're already a little bit uh, over time, so let's go to the last point of the agenda, um, which is to uh, confirm the next step. Um, uh, um, and um, so I think we wanted to confirm the date of the, the, the exact time that we want, we're going to make the, the announcement. Um, I, I want to give a little bit of time for people to, who are not in the call to um, review the draft that will be updated and shared by Michael. So, <laughs> may I suggest to give, um, I don't know what would be a good time that covers, um, that gives chance for everybody to uh, take a look. I think uh, if we give 24 hours window, that would be a little bit uh, uh, would that be a little bit uh, too late, or either 12 hours or 24 hours? Any suggestions? Um, I'm not too familiar with this um, time issue, so if anybody has um, any experience on this, um, I, I would appreciate um, suggestions. But, um, if not, I, actually we've been circulating this draft on the main, so let's go for 12 hours. We will target to make the announcement on 12 hours from now, which is on, I don't know what time that will be, in case we can't see. So, um, it's going to be 14 o'clock um, UTC. That's, let's, let's target to make the announcement. And um, so we already, nobody has uh, objected um, on the announcement language. So I'll, I'll make the, go ahead with the announcement as uh, it is um, on um, at 12 UTC. Um, so um, yeah, so actually it may yeah. So uh, I'll do that. Yeah, and then so I think we're done with um, all of the agenda items except for um, the. The date confer we're confirming the date and time for the next call. So before we go there, is there anything else that the people feel we want to discuss in the call today? One change to announcement. Mention that a future draft will reorder. Okay, yeah, very good point, Alan. So I'll reflect that a revision in the main on the mailing list, and then share that, and uh, to make sure everybody um, is happy with that. Um, excellent point, Alan. Thank you. Anything else that people want to uh, raise or discuss in the call today? Nope. Okay, so uh, we confirm the next call date. Um, I think our initial plan was um, the Monday, the 22nd, um, the same time. And unless people feel otherwise, I would like to uh, keep this uh, time. Um, so let's meet again on uh, Monday, the uh, 22nd. Yep, I don't see any further comments. So thank you very much all for joining the call. And okay for Monday, Alan. Uh, excellent. And I think we, we did uh, make uh, quite a good uh, progress uh, since the call yesterday. So I really appreciate um, joining the call and uh, getting involved in the work. So, so that's um, our meeting is over. Thank you. I'll talk to you all again on Monday. Bye. Bye.